ാണ് <laughs> and jesus uh would speak to them and ask them what does the world say who does the world say i am what is the world's understanding and perception of who i am um and you know the disciples respond to jesus and say some say you're elijah some say you're a prophet so on and so forth and then jesus asks a pointed question where he says who do you say I am. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Who do you say I am? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Every, every one of us with our eyes closed. Hallelujah. Take a minute to recognize who is Jesus to you this morning. Who do you say I am? Hallelujah. The world will say whatever the world wants to say. Amen. The uncle next to you will say something that he sees. The auntie next to you will see something that she sees. Your friends will see something that they see. But today, come before God, hallelujah, with a personal understanding of who Jesus is to you. Who do you say I am? Hallelujah. Father, we come before you in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continuously hungry for you, continuously thirsty for you, to know you and to know you in a deeper personal way, Father God. Hallelujah. And one day when you return to the world, hallelujah, and that question stands before us, who do you say I am? May we have a concrete answer, hallelujah, a concrete understanding based in relationship of who you are, hallelujah, spirit of the living God. would you come and teach us who is jesus spirit of the living god would you come and open our eyes of understanding that we may see jesus spirit of the living god would you open our eyes of understanding this morning that we may awaken to the life and resurrection that is in jesus holy spirit would you give us hallelujah a mighty experience in the presence of the almighty god that we may know him and know Oh, the fellowship of his sufferings hallelujah holy spirit come and move mightily among us holy spirit pour out your spirit oh pour out your power pour out your anointing upon us this morning hallelujah lord take us from glory to glory and from strength to strength spirit of the living god Hallelujah. Give us an awakening. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, give us an awakening. Thank you, Father, for your mighty presence among us. We give you give we give ourselves into your mighty hands and we give you the glory. Be lifted up and be revealed among us this morning. We pray these things, Father, in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Since the beginning of 2022, the Holy Spirit has been speaking uh, speaking one sentence over and over in my in my own in my own heart in my own walk with Jesus personally, but also as a family, one prayer that the Holy Spirit has constantly been leading us to pray is a prayer that's one only one sentence long. We have been asking God through the through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, give us an awakening hallelujah give us an awakening today i'd like to make that the title of our discussion give us an awakening praise be to god please turn your bibles with me to the uh, letter written to the roman church romans chapter 13 roma legenam 13th adhyayathinte 11th vakyathilekku hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah please turn your attentions with me romans 13 and verse 11 praise be to god romans 13 verse 11 and do this praise be to god as you continue to step into 2022 as we continue to wait in the presence of god as individuals families and as a church the lord says do this hallelujah do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake 
out of sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. How many of you are truly able to say, my salvation is nearer to me today than when I first believed. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. How many of you are filled with an overwhelming sense of joy as you recognize that the salvation, that the work of salvation that God began in us. Amen. He who began a good work in you. He who began the salvation process in you. The process of redeeming you. The process of drawing you into the kingdom of God, the process of pulling you out of darkness into the light of, of the gospel, the process of bringing us out of death into life in Jesus Christ, into eternity with Jesus. He who began a good work in you, hallelujah, will bring it to completion. Praise be to God. He who began a saving work in you, he who began a redeeming work in you, he who began a sanctifying work in you, hallelujah, will bring it to completion, the Bible says. And now the Apostle Paul says that time is nearer than when you first believed. Hallelujah. Can you just take a minute and thank God that your salvation is nearer to you today than it was when we first believed. Hallelujah. How many of you are filled with an overwhelming sense of joy? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter this morning, Uncle Auntie, who is preaching or what the person's name is or who, what the background of the person is. But today the Holy Spirit is speaking to us and reminding us, hallelujah, our salvation is nearer today than when we first believed. For some of us, that's a matter of ecstatic excitement, hallelujah. Oh my God, his coming is near. Oh, my salvation is near. Oh, my Jesus is so close. That's a matter of excitement. But maybe, hallelujah, if you're potentially on the other spectrum, it could be a matter matter of great fear for you. It could be a matter of great dread in your spirit. My salvation is near. Hallelujah. His coming is near. The time is ticking. And so the apostle Paul says, knowing that your salvation is near, do one thing. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I was so blessed a few weeks ago and pastor was preaching. Uh, he was preaching from the book of Philippians about running. And Paul says, do one thing. Hallelujah. I do one thing. Praise be to God. If you don't do anything, do one thing. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Similarly to the Roman church, he writes, do this. Hallelujah. If there's one thing as the Roman church, you, you ought to do, do this. Awake out of your sleep. Hallelujah. To the Philippian church, he says, do this, forgetting the things that are behind you and eagerly looking forward to the things ahead of you, fixing your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith press on hallelujah to the roman church he says glory to god do this knowing the time awake out of sleep hallelujah and he uses an interesting term it is high time it is high time. Hallelujah. You know, there are plenty of uh, English uh, vernaculars, uh, such as this word right here, high time. You know, we often say it is high time, praise be to God, uh, to, uh, to, you know, buy an iPhone. It is high time to become technologically versed. Hallelujah. It is high time to become intelligent. It is high time to become fashionable and to get with the times, you know, in the in the political world, they use a term called wokeness. I'm, I'm not a good, I'm not, I'm not into politics, but I just want to use that term here. The term is wokeness. Usually when, when the world uses in the, in the political spectrum, when they use the word wokeness, they're talking about progressivism. They're talking about getting with the times. Amen. The wokeness is a term that represents progressive mindsets. Don't be stuck in the past get with the times. Now, whether that's true or not, whether that's good or not, I will leave it to your judgment. I will leave it between you and Jesus. Hallelujah. But I believe we need a wokeness in our spiritual walk. Hallelujah. You've got to go spiritually woke. Praise be to God. We have to come and get with the times. That's why he says, knowing the time. Hallelujah. You have to know the time and you have to prepare yourself according to the time that you're in. 
life. You cannot be stuck in 10 years ago when you said, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You can't be stuck in 10 years ago when you took water baptism. You can't be stuck in 15 years ago when you first received the Holy Spirit. You can't be stuck in 20 years ago when you began to speak in tongues or began to receive the gifting of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God teaches us to know the time, to get with the times, to keep progressing. Hallelujah. And that means a wokeness and awakening in the spirit. Hallelujah. A wokeness in the spirit. To not be stuck in the traditions of yesterday, but to move in to the power of the Holy Spirit displayed for you today. To not be stuck in the traditional bondage of yesterday, but to get with the move of God today. To get with the directions of God today. To get into the flow of God to get into the work of God today. Hallelujah. To, to recognize that yesterday, whatever it is that you thought you accomplished is not enough to sustain you today. Hallelujah. To recognize that yesterday's accomplishments, yesterday's awards, and yesterday's, hallelujah, applause will not sustain you today. And today's accomplishments will not allow you to see another day in your life, but to get with the times and to get with the flow of the Holy Spirit, to get with the work of God today that will sustain you not just today but will take you into eternity with God hallelujah hallelujah in the bagal devatma parayunnada give us an awakening hallelujah anybody feel an urgency in your spirit since the beginning of 2022 hallelujah i've had uh, they they call it a knot in your stomach but you could call it an urgency in your spirit hallelujah i've had an urgency in my spirit and god is my witness i've been fervently asking god for an urgent awakening hallelujah because the time is nearer my salvation is nearer hallelujah what i am today is not sufficient who i am today is not enough hallelujah i need to completely get rid of who i am today and get with the times get with the holy spirit i've got to get with god hallelujah my salvation is nearer to me today than it was when I first believed at the age of 11. At the age of 11, I said, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Now, 16 years later, hallelujah, my salvation is nearer to me today than when I was, hallelujah, accepting Jesus at the age of 11. Until I think they, they take a minute and think back and look back upon your journey. How many years ago did you say yes to Jesus? How many years ago did you accept Jesus? How many years Years ago, did the call of God, hallelujah, do a work deeper than your spirit and then look at you today, hallelujah. Go ahead and evaluate the number of years that have gone by and develop an urgency in your spirit today, hallelujah. In the 15 years of my salvation, in the 20 years of my salvation experience, in the 30, 40, 50 years of my salvation experience, I may not have had an urgency. Hallelujah. But I have an urgency. Today in, in 2022, I have an urgency. Hallelujah. I, I feel this somewhere deep in my spirit today. God says we need an urgent awakening. Hallelujah. There is no more time to waste. There is no more time to slumber. There is no more time to, uh, to, to be half awake and to be half asleep. There is no more time to be lukewarm, half here and half there. There is no more time to teeter-totter on the fine line of 50%. Hallelujah. There's no more time. Hallelujah. You know, there are times when we are, when we are so tired and exhausted. I've been doing nights, night shifts this whole week. And so uh, yesterday was my last night shift. At the end of the week is usually when I feel extremely exhausted. And I'm, I'm now at the end of my week. And I, and I was thinking yesterday, I was so tired that I didn't even know where the restroom was in my house. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you're so exhausted, you wake up and you're, you, you don't 
even know, is this a wall? Is it a door? Is this the bathroom? Is this the bedroom? Is this the kitchen? There is a sense of exhaustion that sets in and a loss of directionality. And then you think it's a door and you're walking into walls. Hallelujah. You think it's a window and you're walking into walls. There are times in our lives, Uncle Andy, hallelujah, where there is a sense of spiritual tiredness and a sense of spiritual slumber hallelujah that you 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 don't know is this a door for me is this a wall for me is God telling me to go through the, the door or is God putting up a wall and telling me not to go and in our slumber sometimes we make decisions in our slumber we mistake doors for walls we mistake windows for doors we mistake waiting for doing we mistake breaking for accepting Accelerating. Hallelujah. Amen. When we're falling asleep at the wheel, hallelujah, we mistake our, we, we, we mistakenly uh, don't recognize where we are on the road and we wear off to the side and we lose a sense of directionality. We stumble our way across the road, hallelujah. Today I'm asking you, is it possible that you might be so exhausted in your spirit, hallelujah. Something like Elijah in 1 Kings 19, he was so heavily attacked he was so heavily, hallelujah, targeted by Jezebel and Ahab. He was on the road, hallelujah, on the run for his life, finding himself completely exhausted under a broom tree, under a juniper tree, and asleep in the wilderness under a juniper tree. And God would ask Elijah, Elijah, why are you sleeping here? Hallelujah. First Kings 19, Elijah, what are you doing here? Hallelujah. You see, Uncle Andy, when you go into a state of spiritual slumber, even if you're the greatest prophet in the world, even if you're the highest prophet in the land, sometimes exhaustion takes hold of you and the slumber sets in. And the slumber sets in. Hallelujah. And you come to a point where you think, I am no better than my fathers. Hallelujah. And God has to give you some bread. And God has to give you some water and, 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 and help you awaken and help you find strength. You know what I find interesting about that passage? Even after eating bread from heaven, even after drinking water from an angel, my Bible says Elijah laid down and fell asleep again. Hallelujah. Sometimes the slumber is so deep. Hallelujah. You can have a bread from heaven. You can hear the best sermon from God, from the man of God, and God could speak to you in a powerful way. You could experience, hallelujah, the water, the satisfaction, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and still go back to slumbering. Hallelujah. You could be part of a spiritual church and still find yourself slumbering. Hallelujah. You could be a Pentecostal for 25 years. Forgive me, but you could still find yourself slumbering. Hallelujah. I feel an urgency in my spirit to, to just say, Lord, give us an awakening. Hallelujah. Give us an awakening. Can I, can I take you a few steps deeper to help you understand this? Uh, please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Acts. Come with me to the book of Acts chapter 12. I want to just uh, delve slightly deep into this uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit. It's been ministering to me for the past two months, and I'm so thankful that the Lord has been teaching me so much. I want to share some of it with you. Acts chapter 12, let's read from verses 5 onwards. Acts chapter 12. Uh, verses 5 onwards. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. Look at the urgency. Arise quickly. Now, right now, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, guard yourself, tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. So he went and followed him, but did not know. This is our key verse. He did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. 
Hallelujah. Skip down to verse 11 with me. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Praise be to God. Uh, praise be to God. A very powerful passage. I'm sure you've heard a hundred messages on the church praying for Peter while he was in prison. I don't want to tell you something that you already are aware of, but would you allow me to just show you something that the Holy Spirit has been teaching me? The first question I want to place before you is to recognize and wonder, have a sense of wonder today, wonder how Peter was able to sleep that night. See, when I am under intense stress, maybe not you, but certainly me, when I'm pastoring, when I'm going through stressful situations, the first thing to go and the last thing to come back for me is my sleep. Hallelujah. The first thing to go and the last thing to come back is my sleep. Praise be to God. When I'm under stressful situations, sleep is difficult for me. Praise be to God. That's just who I am personally. But take a look at this. The Bible says Peter's execution date was set for the following morning. Hallelujah. In fact, verse 6 says Herod was just about to bring him out, meaning he was about to bring him out of the prison and publicly execute him. What's crazy about this story is that just a few verses prior we read in verse, verses, one, verses 1 and 2 that the apostle James was just killed in a similar fashion. Herod killed the Apostle James just a few days prior in a similar fashion. Listen to me carefully. Sometimes when you feel like you're heavily attacked by the enemy, I mentioned to you, just like Elijah, a sense of exhaustion begins to set in. Now, exhaustion makes way for emptiness hallelujah exhaustion makes way for emptiness all of a sudden peter finds himself in the same exact place that james was finding himself just a few days ago now james the apostle hallelujah i can only assume when he was imprisoned the church was probably praying for him too. Hallelujah. When James was in prison, I am sure the church was praying for Pastor James to be delivered from prison. I am sure the church was praying for God to give a mighty freedom, a mighty deliverance to do a miracle in the life of James and to set him free from prison. I am sure the church would have prayed for James just as they are praying for Peter. But you know, Peter was part of the praying group. I assume that, hallelujah, I can safely assume that, the, that Peter, the other apostles, and the church for, would have prayed for James. The thing is, their prayers were not answered. Hallelujah. When they prayed for Apostle James, hallelujah, God did not deliver James a Chachin from the prison. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. When they prayed for Apostle James, God did not set him free from the prison. There was no answer to the prayers, not, not the expected answer at least. They did not receive what they were expecting to receive. They have seen God do miracles. They have seen God raise the dead. They have seen God give sight to the blind. They have seen God use James to perform signs, miracles, and wonders in the lives of many. But when they prayed for James, God was silent. Hallelujah. Now, Peter, hallelujah, is still in the same place. Hallelujah. He's thinking, hallelujah, when I was praying for James with the church, when the church prayed for James, brother, hallelujah, when the, when the church prayed for my dear brother, James, we walked with Jesus together. We were friends. We were brothers in Christ. Hallelujah. We walked with Jesus together. We ate with Jesus together. We ate every meal together when we walked with Jesus. Jesus as his 12 disciples. We drank our, our, we drank water together. We slept in the same spaces when we walked with Jesus. We watched Jesus do miracles, signs, and wonders. We listened to the same sermons. Can you just imagine in a minute in your mind the closeness that Peter and James would have had? You know, when you go through intense uh, suffering like the disciples did under the leadership of Jesus, I'm sure the disciples were very close 
Hallelujah. You can imagine the camaraderie, the friendship and the brotherhood of the disciples, especially because they were so intensely persecuted by the Jewish people of their times. Hallelujah. James and Peter, I'm sure we're close brothers. And here is Peter probably remembering, hallelujah, all the times that the church and Peter prayed for James and God didn't answer that prayer. And they would have to have witnessed James being publicly executed. Hallelujah. And we, they might have even carried the body, who knows. They might have even had to have a, have a funeral service for James, we don't know. The Bible is silent. They might have even, hallelujah, had a mourning period, a grieving period for James, one of the chief apostles of the church. Hallelujah. I'm sure, hallelujah, there was, there was great honor and respect paid to James after he was martyred for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, Peter coming fresh out of that experience, coming fresh out of that path, coming fresh out of that mindset, finds himself to be the next person on the chopping block. Hallelujah. He finds himself to be the next person with a sword set for his neck. He's ready to be beheaded. And it's almost as if Peter has given up all hope. It's almost as if he's exhausted. Hallelujah. He's been fighting this for a long time. He's been doing this for a long time. Men and women of God will know what it's like to preach a uh, sermon after sermon when you're exhausted. Sermon after sermon. Sometimes you have to continue the work of God even when you're fighting a war. Ask any man of God in the room. Ask any woman of God in the room. Even when they're going through intense pain and suffering. Hallelujah. They are serving. They are, they are still faithful to the kingdom of God. I praise God for such faithful men and women of God. I praise God for men and women of God that despite their pain and despite their personal losses, continue to serve in the kingdom. And now in this moment, having served so well, having run so well, having been under such intense attack, Peter is exhausted. Peter is exhausted. He's grieving, he's mourning, he's exhausted to the point where, last thing the Bible says, there were four squadrons, verse four, four squadrons of, of soldiers that were encamped outside of his prison. Four squadrons is 16 soldiers. Each squad was four. So four into four is 16 soldiers dedicated to making sure that Peter does not escape the prison. In addition to that, verse five and six say that there are two soldiers on either side of him. Hallelujah. In addition to that, there are two chains, verse six, there are two chains that are holding Peter to his prison cell. So 18 soldiers, two chains, an inner prison that had two gates, verse 10 says there are two gates there. In addition to the iron gate, hallelujah, look at all the tight security the enemy had to put in place for one Peter. Hallelujah. Can I take a minute and preach to you this morning? Hallelujah. When there is an anointing over your life. Hallelujah. When the world recognizes the kind of anointing that God's children, God's faithful children carry. When the world sees, hallelujah, the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives of God's people. Hallelujah. Herod understood that Peter is just a fisherman, but there is something about this guy because he was somebody that walked with Jesus. He's somebody, Peter and John went to pray. They saw a lame man on the way. Hallelujah. Sitting at the gate called beautiful and they had to raise this man out of his crippleness and Peter and John were put in prison in Acts chapter 9. Peter has already been in prison once and God delivered him from prison. Hallelujah. Now Herod knows, oh my gosh, P Peter and John were once in prison just a few days ago. This time 
I'm not letting Peter go. This time, I'm going to make sure that Peter stays in the prison. Hallelujah. Look at all the things that the enemy has to do just to contain a man who was nothing but a fisherman in the eyes of the world. 18 soldiers for one Peter. Two chains for one Peter. And in a prison with two gates and an iron gate for one Peter. Hallelujah. Can I just remind you, if the enemy is attacking you that severely, you must know that there is a power in you. Hallelujah. That is so big that the enemy has to come up with 18 well-trained soldiers to keep you. The enemy has to come up with not one chain, but two chains. Hallelujah. The enemy has to put you in a prison with two gates and an iron gate because the enemy recognizes the power of the anointing which you carry hallelujah which the lord has placed in you but the good news is despite the tight security the anointing still won hallelujah despite the tight security the anointing still broke the yoke despite the tight security the anointing still broke him out of prison despite the 18 soldiers despite the two chains despite the two gates despite the iron gate i just came to preach to some people that will recognize this morning despite your sickness despite your problems despite your weakness despite the strength of your enemy, despite the magnitude and the intensity of the attack against you, despite the hosts and the armies that were launched against you, your anointing is still stronger. Hallelujah. Your anointing is still capable of delivering you. The anointing of the Holy Spirit still breaks bondages. The anointing of the Holy Spirit still breaks the yoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know, I just want to pause for a minute and want you to come with me to verse seven and recognize something. Let's go one step deeper. Now the angel comes in to bring Peter out of prison. Now the Bible says angel came into the room. Peter is not waking up. So now the Bible says the angel stood next to him, stood next to him and Peter still doesn't wake up. Then the Bible says a light was shown in the prison. I don't know about you, but when I'm sleeping and somebody turns the lights on, that is, that is the end of it for me. Hallelujah. One thing that I cannot stand is when, pe when people turn the light on, when I'm sleeping, I cannot stand it. My mom used to do that to me every day when I was a child. Every day, 5.45 a.m. sharp from the age of, I don't even know, probably from birth, who knows, from, from as long as I can remember, exactly at 5.45, my mother will remove my blanket and turn on the light, hallelujah, and then she will say, get up and read your Bible, hallelujah, praise be to God, so this is how I was, I was, I was raised, and so now that I'm on my own, I tell my husband, I say, whatever you do, do not turn on the light. Hallelujah. I don't care if you bring a big drum and start beating it and worshiping God. No problem. But whatever you do, do not turn on the light. Hallelujah. Praise. If you want, you want blanket, take the blanket. I don't care. But don't turn on the light. Hallelujah. Stodram. So here's Peter sleeping in the prison and the angel is shining a big light. You know, itrem jayadutum patros elnekumile. Amen. Angel came into the room. Angel stood by him. Angel is shining light on him and still no response. Sometimes we are like that. Hallelujah. The light of God is bright in the room. The presence of God is bright in the room. Pastor's mic volume is that the highest possible volume and people will still find a way to sleep. Hallelujah. Pastor will be preaching. His, his life will go. If he, preach, if he preaches even an iota louder, his life will go. Hallelujah. Stotram. Pastor Bote. Hallelujah. Stotram. Sorgatil Namuru Dudan Vanna. Ninalum. Hallelujah. Chalakwarangan Kari Male. Sotram. Listen to this. He is able to sleep despite all of this. Despite the soldiers, despite the chains, despite execution dead for tomorrow morning. Nana Ravile, your head will roll. Praise be to God. Your head will be beheaded tomorrow morning. Your head will be detached from your body. 
Peter is exhausted. He's gone. And now, despite all of this, Peter is sleeping. I love this, though, because my God is not a God who quits. Hallelujah. He has trained his angels. Hallelujah. Perfectly according to his nature. God is not a God who quits. And he has trained his angels to not quit. Look at this. The angel struck Peter on the side. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In other words, the angel had to slap him awake. Praise be to God. My mommy used to slap me awake sometimes, even though I was not waking up. She would say, get up, 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 read your Bible. Hallelujah. Stodram, I still have nightmares about that. Anyway, look at this. In verse 1, the angel struck him on the side. Not just that. The angel is saying, arise quickly. I don't think the angel said it quietly. Hallelujah. Arise quickly. Samayamai. Hallelujah. Sodram. Get up. Arise quickly. Amen. Now my Bible says, when Peter came awake after the angel struck him, today maybe sometimes, it maybe it's possible that uh, you might need some striking today. Hallelujah. But my, you know what my Bible says? Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Hallelujah. Whom the Lord loves, he slaps. Whom the Lord loves, he strikes. Hallelujah. To fulfill the purpose of God that God wants to accomplish through your life, sometimes He'll strike you. Hallelujah. Sometimes He'll has to, He has to give you a small addy. Hallelujah. But praise God, whom the Lord loves, He strikes. Hallelujah. Whom the Lord loves, He will not leave you there. Can I just tell you, Herod left Peter in the prison. Praise be to God. But I thank God, as long as you're a child of God, as as long as Jesus is the living God on earth and in heaven, as long as there is no other God but Jesus in the world, hallelujah, the, tell your enemy to never expect you to be where he left you. Hallelujah. When Herod left Peter in the prison, he expected Peter to remain in the prison. That's why there was tight security. But you know, the next day when Peter, when Peter was being searched for, when Herod looked for Peter the next morning, Peter was not in the prison. Stodram, hallelujah. If God has called you, if God has anointed you, if God has a purpose for your life, if there is anything that God has promised to you, hallelujah, Tell your enemy that to, to never expect you to be where he left you. Hallelujah. Tell your enemy. Tell the people that are against you. Tell your problems. Tell your sickness. Don't expect me to be where you left me. Hallelujah. Because you might put me in a particular place. You might put me in a particular situation. You might put me in a good number of chains. You might put me under heavy watch, but my God is about to bring me out of it. Hallelujah. Because he's got a plan for my life. He's got a, a love for me that's greater than something that I can comprehend. Love deeper than the oceans. Love more vast than the earth. La love more vast than the universe. He's going to come for me. He's not going to leave me where my enemy locked me up. Hallelujah. Herod, don't look for me in the prison. Hallelujah. Herod, don't go looking for me in the prison. I will not be there. I will not be there. And then I will not be there. Hallelujah. I will not be there. 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 I will not or a Shakta Maya Deva Munda, Shakta Maya Abishaka and Dagata, and the Deva Pagan the Tunda, Ni and the Karagrat and Gilito. But don't expect me to be there for long. Hallelujah. My God will not leave me there. He won't leave me there. Hallelujah. There's an old saying, he did not bring me this far to leave me. Hallelujah. He did not bring me this far to leave me now. He did not bring me, hallelujah, this far to leave me now. He did not bring me out of all my issues and all my problems to leave me now. He 
who began a good work in me will finish it. Hallelujah. He who began a good work in me will finish it. God saved me and God called me to be a witness. He will do both. Hallelujah. He will finish saving me and he will finish the work that he has begun in my life and the work that he has begun through my life. Tell your enemy to not expect you to be where he left you. Hallelujah. Look at this. Now, after the angel has struck him, after the angel told him to arise quickly, my main message is right here. My Bible says in verse 7 and the end of it, his chains fell off. Hallelujah. His chains fell off. Hallelujah. Notice. The chains did not fall off when the angel walked into the room. The chains did not fall off when the angel stood next to him. The chains did not fall off until he was awake. Hallelujah. It's not until he is awake that the chains are falling off. Hallelujah. In the hallelujah, the makimid in the or a very, very part in the makaprabi kampriya sabaye. Hallelujah. Dear men and women of God, let's receive a powerful revelation tonight, to, today morning from the Holy Spirit. You can only be free if you're awake. Hallelujah. You can only be free if you're awake. It, it, well, not a simple on the lane. Because think about it. What is the point of God delivering you if you're asleep? If God's broke your chains, if God broke your bondages, but you're still sleeping. Because you'll still be in the same place. Hallelujah. In other words, let me put it, put it to you this way. What is the difference between somebody in bondage and somebody who's asleep? Hallelujah. Both are going to be stuck in the same place. Both will not be, be able to experience what God has for their lives. Both will not be able to inherit what God has for their lives. There is no, practically, there is no difference between a spiritually bound person and a spiritually slumbering person. Hallelujah. He who is spiritually bound and he who is spiritually asleep, both have to experience the same life consequences, a lack of progress, a lack of progress. Hallelujah. Neither will progress. Neither will be able to step forward. Glory to God. Glory to God, Uncle Auntie and the Shemikanam. But even if we are saved, even if we are Patros, hallelujah, even if we are Apostle and Mar Sodram, if we are sleeping, we cannot progress. Hallelujah. There is no difference between a spiritually bound person, somebody with a spiritual bondage, and somebody who's spiritually asleep. Because guess what? Spiritual slumber in itself is a spiritual bondage. Hallelujah. Spiritual slumber in itself is a bondage. Hallelujah. In itself, by definition, it's something that binds you. By definition, it's something that captivates you. By definition, it's something that imprisons you. Slumber will imprison you. Slumber will hold you captive. Slumber will, ca will capture you and, and plant you in a place and hold you there. Amen. So whether you have chains or whether you have spiritual slumber, neither can progress in life. Neither can progress in spiritual walk with God. Neither can progress in the walk with Jesus. Hallelujah. See, my uncle, auntie, my, my brother, sister, sometimes people will remain in bondage for 10 years, 15 years. When we go to some places, they'll say, Sister Angel, Pastor Stephen, we have been going through the same bondage for 10 years. Hallelujah. But it's not until Peter is awake that his chains fall off. Hallelujah. Listen to me. No matter how many people are praying for you, you have to open your eyes. Hallelujah. No matter how many pastors are laying hands on you, you have to open your eyes. You have to open your eyes and be awakened to the power of God. Awaken to the glory of God. Awaken to the power of the Holy Spirit. Awaken and experience get into the flow, get into the move of God. You've got to personally step in to a spiritual awareness of God's reality. Hallelujah. Stodram, if you want to be delivered, 
you've got to step in to a spiritual awareness of God's reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not until he's awake that he's free. Praise be to God in the bagal. My time is almost up. Just a few minutes, I'll stop here. Not just, not, not, not only is Peter the one who's asleep, I want you to take a minute and recognize something. Both the church and Peter have the same problem. What is the one problem? I'll end with this. Bible says in verse nine, he was so asleep to the point where God is delivering him. He's waking up and he's putting on his clothes. There's a lot of uh, revelation that I won't touch. Verse eight is very powerful. I won't go into it. Now, Peter is following the angel. Amen. Not only that, not only is, is he just following, Bible says verse 10, he went past the first gate. You know, in the Roman times, those gates were not quiet doors, like your shock absorption filled doors, right? Our doors have shock absorption. So they're not loud and cranky and, and, and they don't bang every time. Hmm? But look at this, not the Roman doors, hallelujah. When a door, when a prison door in the, in the Roman prison opened, I'm sure it did not sound like chimes. I'm sure it did not sound like uh, flutes playing in the heavens, hallelujah. So the, a Roman prison door opening was a loud, cranky iron noise, hallelujah. First gate opened, next, second gate opened. Now, verse 10 says, he even went to the iron gate, hallelujah. The iron gate, the Bible is making it more and more clear to you that this is a loud door, hallelujah. Now he's done all of this, but he's still not sure whether it's real or not, amen. How can you know if you're spiritually slumbering? I'll give you one quick pointer here. You know you're slumbering if you're unsure of the reality of God's work in your life. Hallelujah. You know you're slumbering if you're unsure and unaware of the reality of God's work in your life. It is so real that God is delivering him, but he's unsure. He thinks he's seeing a vision. Hallelujah. He thinks it's somewhere far off. Sometimes if we're spiritually slumbering, we'll be praying for something, but we only see the answer to the prayer in our vision. We only see it far off. Hallelujah. We don't see it in our present time. We don't see it in our present situation. We don't recognize that the answer to the prayer is already a reality. Hallelujah. You don't recognize recognize that he who believes in Jesus has already gone from death to life. Hallelujah. You are thinking after I die, I will go to heaven. No, no. Hallelujah. You're already filled with the life of Jesus. This life will be perfected when we go to heaven. Hallelujah. We have passed from death to life. Amen. Sometimes we live in an unaware situation, in an unawareness, in an unsurety. Is it real or is it not? Am I really speaking Vanya Basha or am I not? Is pastor really prophesying or does he know something? So, or you're constantly wondering. You're constantly wondering, is it real or not? Is it real or not? You're always unsure. Hallelujah. If there is a spiritual uncertainty, recognize it's because you're spiritually slumbering. Hallelujah. God is real. God's work is real. God's deliverance is real. God's power is real. God still heals. God still, hallelujah, sets people free. God is still opening prison doors left and right. You know, the church had the same problem because here's Peter out of prison. My Bible says in verse 13, he knocked on the church gate. He knocks on the church gate. Rhoda answers, she's so excited, she forgets to open the gate, goes to the church and tells the church, Pastor Peter has arrived. Pastor Peter is free. We prayed for Pastor James. Pastor James never came back, but Peter, God brought him back. A young girl, can I talk to the young people for a minute? A young girl is telling the church, Peter is outside. Now the church responds to her in verse 15, but they said to her, you are crazy. You are. Hallelujah. Are you crazy? 
You are beside yourself. In other words, you're crazy. Hallelujah. You've lost it. You're imagining something. Hallelujah. You're seeing a ghost. You're seeing an angel. Verse 15, they said, maybe it's his angel. You're not seeing Peter. But auntie, you're praying for Peter. Come on. Hallelujah. Andrei, you're praying for Peter. Prarthana enduva. Patrosne neivam vidudikkene. Hallelujah. Patrosu pastrana enge nengilum vidudikkene. Yaakobu pastrana neivam vidudikkene. At least Patrosu pastrana vidudikkene. Idana prarthana. Itraim. Rathri mooluvan avara avada irunna. Prarthikkene. Pashe prarthana eda marubadi. Hallelujah. Get in the portal. Stotram. The answer to their prayer is, is in front of them, right outside the gate of the church. You know what I thought was interesting? When Peter was coming out, Pastor Uncle, first gate of the prison opened automatically. Second gate of the prison opened automatically. Even the iron gate that leads into the city opened automatically. The one gate that did not open automatically was the the church gate. Hallelujah. Amen. I thought to myself, what is this logic? I know in the kingdom of God, everything is upside down, but I didn't realize it was this upside down. Stotram. I always thought prison gates should not open automatically. Hallelujah. Prison gates should be very secure. They shouldn't open automatically. But I always thought church gates should be automatic doors. അല്ലേ നമ്മൾ എയർപോർട്ടിലൊക്കെ പോയാൽ അവിടെ നമ്മൾ കാണും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഗ്രോസറി സ്റ്റോറിൽ പോയാലും കാണും കാഷൻ ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക് ഡോർ ഏമൻ നമ്മൾ ഇപ്പോൾ എവിടെ പോയാലും ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക് ഡോർസാ ഉള്ളത് നമ്മൾ അവിടെ പോയി നിന്നാ മതി അങ്ങനെ തുറക്കും സ്തോത്രം പത്രോസം അങ്ങനെ ആയിപ്പോയി സ്തോത്രം കാരാഗ്രഹത്തിൽ നിന്ന് പുറത്തു വരുമ്പോൾ ഒരൊറ്റ കാണുന്ന എല്ലാ ഡോറുകളും ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക് ഡോർസ് ആണ് സ്തോത്രം world's first automatic door was here in rome not in america stotra hallelujah where god appears every door is an automatic door hallelujah every few the jesus never attended a funeral why everywhere he went dead people came to life automatically hallelujah no no such thing as a closed door because where jesus appears they become automatic doors except for one except for one hallelujah the church gate is not opening karanam karanam what same problem that peter had a few minutes ago they are thinking not possible we are praying but it's not we don't think this is actually real hallelujah we are praying but i don't think it's actually happening namal prarthikkunnu devame unarvine aayikane pashe i don't actually think it's possible pashe nan uposichu prarthikkum amen devame rogigale saukhyamaakkane prarthikkunnundu uposikkunnundu pashe i don't necessarily really believe but i'm praying hallelujah okay maybe not you i have been there in my life ningalokke valare vishwasathil amen valare mature aaya aalkara stotra mahal prarthikkunnadellam sambhavikkum enna poorna vishwasam ningalkokke undenna enikku thonunnathu pashe ende jeevithathil palappalum njan angane orthittund prarthikkunnund pashe i wondered will it really happen i don't know but i'm praying hallelujah stotra amen today we must come out of our slumber when you are slumbering you are constantly praying and not expecting when you're slumbering you're constantly praying but not expecting hallelujah another way you know that you are slumbering is when you have stunted expectations of god your expectations of god are stunted hallelujah you believe unto, up to a certain degree but beyond that it's stunted hallelujah you are praying for something supernatural but your expectation is not necessarily supernatural hallelujah our, our faith does not match the eloquency level of our prayers amen some of us can pray so eloquently you feel like jesus will come back 2 seconds after you say amen so good hallelujah so powerful but question is what is the expectancy of your heart after you say amen hallelujah after saying amen don't go back and make chapati hallelujah expectancy hallelujah expectancy nan prarthichittunda ende devam inde prarthanagale kelkunavanana nan prarthikkumbol yehovayude kaadugal hallelujah ende prarthanagale kelkunu hallelujah nan yehovakkai kaathu kaathallo avan ennilekku endu cheyidu chaanni ketallo hallelujah he leans his ears and closely pays attention to what i am asking of him he leans his ears inclines his hearing to hear what his children are praying for 
Amen. Hallelujah. An expectation was missing to the point where Patros Chaitan is outside banging on the door. He's saying, I just escaped from jail. Somebody open this door. Hallelujah. Somebody open this door. I just escaped from jail. In the Aragilum Kandal. Amen. They won't wait until tomorrow morning to kill me. They will call me now. Amen. Hallelujah. They will kill me now. Stotra. Peter is banging on the door. Nobody is opening. Hallelujah. But I love this in verse 15. Something changes. Verse 15. Now, sorry, verse 16. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. The Bible says the young girl named Rhoda kept insisting. Verse 15. Yet she kept insisting. Young people, listen to me. I'm done. I'm done. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. Young people, one word to the young, young people and I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. The Bible says the whole church was lacking an expectancy and unawareness of God's reality in response to their prayers. All night prayer, but no expectancy. But I love this. She is so sure that she heard Peter's voice. The Bible says she kept insisting. Hallelujah. She kept insisting. I have a prophetic uh, faith in my heart. I believe that this end times generation will be like this. Hallelujah. A prophetic belief I have and the belief and faith that I have is that despite who believes and who doesn't believe, despite anybody's unbelief, a generation will rise up that will insist on the reality of who God is and what he can do. Hallelujah. A generation that will insist that Jesus is Lord. A generation that is so sure that God is real that they will insist. Hallelujah. I wish I could preach for five hours. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, I'm praying for a generation. I'm praying for my young generation to be a generation that says, despite the fact that you are not believing, uncle, despite the fact that you cannot believe, auntie, I insist that Jesus is real. I insist that he has set people free. I insist that God can heal. I insist that he is alive. I insist that he is Lord. And I will not compromise on that. No matter who believes in God, I insist that there is a God. No matter who believes that Jesus never existed, I insist that he did and he still does. A generation that insists, I leave you with this, an awakened generation is an uncompromising generation. Hallelujah. An awakened generation is an uncompromising generation. An awakened generation, once you are awake to the reality of God, the reality number kandengil stotram, adine orikilum, hallelujah, namak deny chayan petatilla, ar endu paranyalum, namal parayum, nyan kandutunda, nyan anubavichitunda, I have seen, I have experienced, therefore I insist. Now, because she insisted, my Bible says the gate was opened. Hallelujah. The gate was opened. A generation is coming up that will insist on the work of God, that will insist on the power of the Holy Spirit, that will insist on the word of God, an uncompromising approach to the word of God. If that generation comes up, the church gates will open. Hallelujah. God will expand the territory of the church when an awakened generation becomes an uncompromising generation. Hallelujah. When the church becomes, hallelujah, ready to insist, the gate will open. Hallelujah. I prophesy today in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Beaker Church. Hallelujah. I believe God will open the church gate and God will bring people out of prison and into the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish you could know. Hallelujah. I mean, and Prabhupada might in the other day. Hallelujah. We do the Kaimaru. No, God will bring imprisoned people out of prison and bring them into the freedom of God's church, into his body. The only thing left to do is open the gate. The only thing left to do is open the gate. In the it is high time to awake. Hallelujah. Both the church and Peter had to awake. Hallelujah. One minute, let me Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. Spirit of God, we come before you today. And we cry out, Lord, give us an awakening. The same presence of God is that is in my room is present in yours this morning, Uncle. Hallelujah. One minute with, with being filled with the Holy Spirit. Cry out and say, Father, give me an awakening. Hallelujah. 